got Stasia Beats in the building. How you feeling today? I'm feeling real good. I appreciate y'all for having me, so it's definitely a blessing. Like y'all said, happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. For Thank sure. you for sliding through today. We appreciate it. Of course, it. of course. For sure. All right, now, man. You a goat out here. Yeah. Heard, heard, heard. Hey. That's what they saying? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's, let's go to the beginning <laughs> of the journey, you feel me? Where you from? I'm from the south side. South side of Chicago, born and raised type shit. Uh, yeah, I just been really been out here trying to get my foot in it for for a long time, just paving my way every step I go. All right, how Big was facts. it growing up where you grew up at? Everybody see the city from a different perspective. Uh, it it was it was crazy low key. I could say growing up where I'm from, I'm from Auburn Gresham specifically, okay. like a lot of people call Foster Park. So, um, you know, just like some of my peers and seeing a lot of poverty a lot of violence um it did it did two things for me it, it motivated me to kind of stay on the right path and stay focused on what i always knew my purpose and my vision was in life and then the other half of it was just like showing you firsthand how you always got to be on your p's and q's as much as possible yeah, you know mm-hmm. like it's a, it's a lot of people out here that you know they live life differently you know and regardless of of what type of different fields people play in you just got to know your place out here and don't get tricked out you know, and all this stuff out there that's out here. So it's funny. I was having this conversation earlier this week and we was basically talking about um, being a product of your environment. Now, I feel like it is impossible not to be a product of your environment. That's facts. The only difference is everybody has a choice on how they allow the environment to influence them. And you just said you use this as motivation by seeing the shit. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And my example was. If I walk past the drug dealer every day, you know what I'm saying, that's what I'm looking at. That's what I see. If I see the drug dealer driving a nice car, you know what I'm saying, he got all the money, you know what I'm saying, and, and my family's struggling, I may not have a, a mother or a father at the crib, and I got to take care of my little brother. It's uh, My only option is to get out here and do what I got to do, yeah. you know what I'm saying, compared to somebody that is struggling and may have more of a, a, a support system behind them. At that point, then you can be like, man, I see the struggle and I just want to make it out of the struggle. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to do everything I need to to get out the struggle. You yeah, feel me? Yeah, that's true. So I was happy that you said, you know what I'm saying, what you just said. I think one of the biggest turning points for me was staying in school, really having an opportunity to to go to college and really li- leave the city and live somewhere else. Like, not just living somewhere else, but around different types of people. So, like, I'll be 100 with y'all. I'm not a saint. Like like he said, being a product of your environment is kind of inevitable. So I, like, dibbed and dabbled in a few things that I'm not too proud of, and I won't repeat some of the stuff I did. But at the same time, it's just, like, when I had the opportunity to go to school and, like, I was by myself five hours away from my family. I'm in southern Indiana, so it's a whole different demographic Man. of people. Mm-hmm. And, and you got to learn how to move. You got to learn how to think smart. And then when I came back home for, like, the first couple summer breaks, like, when I was in school, like, on my campus, you look above the hills, it's like glass houses and mansions and stuff like that. I come back out here, we don't even feel comfortable standing on the block. We own that car. Who that in that car? Mm-hmm. It, it, it was just a turning point to like, this is like, it's more to life than this. You know what Facts. I'm saying? And to just stay focused and try to achieve those things that kind of stay on that path. Yeah, that's dope. For sure. Environments, man, that, that leads to a lot of, um, I would say a lot of stress too. And a lot of realizations you have with yourself. So when you get the moments, you can pull yourself up out it. It's like you relieve for the moment, then you come right back into the environmental stress and everything and all the factors that contribute to, like you say, can't even stand on your own block. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like, it could be a it could be a, a store, like, literally right down the street from your house, and that store is an intersection of a place you can possibly lose your life or your freedom mm-hmm. at. You know what I'm saying? So, like, um, I, I believe on top of that, though, it, it leads to quicker decision making, would you That's say? That's true. I, I agree. You got to know how to be quick on your feet because mm-hmm. anything can happen at any moment, whether good or bad. You know, if it's something good, you got to know how to accept it and build upon it. If it's something bad, of course, you got to know how to do what they what we call get out that gym, you know. So For it's sure. like you always got to be, like I said, on your P's and Q's, definitely. For sure. And now with yeah. the um with the beats part of your um of your of your name. How did you start getting into beats and into music and things of that nature? Like, when did that first catch your eye? 
Um, I was into music ever since like I was an adolescent for real. Mm -hmm. So from what I could recall, I wrote my first rap when I was like five or six. Okay. It was just something like real basic, real simple, and I recited it for my family and <laughs> it, it might have been like trash at the time. <laughs> but of course they gave me the motivation, like, yeah, that's dope. Woo woo. Mm -hmm. So I kept writing. Um and then like I just got real kinda like well versed as far as like rapping and lyricism. Um and then from that I just started making beats. So I used to have, matter of fact, one of my homies, uh, his name Crazy. Uh, but anyway, when we was kids, I probably was in like fifth grade, sixth grade. It's like when, when Snap Beats was hard, like Lean With It, Rock With It and all that. Uh -huh. And he downloaded FL Studio on, it was this old ass white IBM computer my granny had. Mm -hmm. And he downloaded a free trial and he just showed me like the basics of how to kind of build the percussion at least around the beat and add different instruments and stuff mm -hmm. to it. And it just took off from there. Like, after he put that on my computer, I'm talking about every day I'm in that basement trying to make three, four, five beats for I can't explain how many years. And, and it just grew upon that. The last, like, creative skill set, at least, that I that I welcomed um, upon myself was engineering. And that partially came from rapping because I could never really find, like, somebody to craft the sound that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And by the time it was time for me to go to college, I'm like, well... I kind of did all my decision making like at the very last minute. But if I'm going to go somewhere and do anything, then I might as well do something that I would like to pursue in the long run. And that was sound engineering. For sure. And it's uh, crazy. But the, yeah, the beats came from it just like, I guess, from rapping and being around other artists and stuff. It's crazy. You learn something new every day. I didn't even know um, that you was a rapper first. You know? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> a lot of people don't because by the time I kind of got into the music industry in Chicago, I did like a few shows, but... Like I said, I was just real heavy on beats at that time in my life, and I had been rapping for, it might sound crazy to say so long, but if I start rapping when I'm five and I'm, like, real engulfed into making beats at 18, 19, that's already 15, 16 years. For sure. It was like beats just became fun. And how many people and how many rooms I can get in just from, you know, like, people liking, liking my beats was dope to me. For sure. Yeah. got to the point up to your point where you got into uh engineering and everything so like what was your biggest um what can you call that like it's a word i'm looking for but pretty much like what was your biggest challenge in um in switching from uh from rapping to then producing and then getting into engineering like pretty much right at the crossroads of producing over to engineering uh my Biggest challenge um, between pr production and engineering, I would say initially it was finding my sound. It's kind of hard to like say that that was the challenge because I had already had an idea of what my sound was just because I like I rapped and I made beats. Right. So some of those elements kind of go hand in hand with engineering when you sit down and kind of really sound design what you want you know to come out of a record as far as it being a person's vocals you kind of taking the same techniques but just switching it from instruments to vocals so i already had an idea but to really find like my glass sound i had to just like it was really off of, of a song i recorded myself and i just sat down and took my time while i was in the studio by myself i ain't had no interruptions and, and just really mixed it to how i thought it would it would sound like if it was a commercial radio record Yourself. And I used that, um, for lack of better words, as like a template, not exactly, but as a basis of how I would start each one of my recording sessions. So really finding my sound was my initial challenge. Um, and then after that, just finding new avenues to, to transfer to again, because I feel like the sky's the limit. As long as I'm breathing, it's always something something diff different that I could try. Real talk. Sure. So going through the process, you feel me, go from rapping producing to engineering at what point did you say i'm gonna open my own space for this uh kind of like having creative differences with other engineers so initially i started out um just kind of written spaces out with with other groups of people who i knew who engineered also um 
with my vision, it was certain things that I wanted to do that maybe other people did or didn't want to do, or they kind of just couldn't see the vision in the way that I saw it. Um, and to me, I felt like the quickest way for me to just do my own thing was to do my own thing. And it, it wasn't necessarily like any hard feelings towards anybody as time went on or whatever, but just like being able to have my own space, my own freedom, even if I, I'm not pulling up for a session or to make beats, just if it's a space for me to come and just like release or, you know, just have a creative space for myself to be, you know, to be in personally, just to have my own thing without anybody having to interrupt it or uh, dictate how certain things would go. So it was, it was a leap of faith the first time I did it, but I, I'm, I'm happy I did because I've been uh, able to grow pretty much ever since. How long did it take you to realize, like, damn, this is a business? Not long, actually. Because <laughs> so I went to school for sound engineering in, in Indiana. At a, at a point, I kind of just didn't like the environment out there, so I transferred out here to Columbia. So in order for me to graduate quicker, I switched my major to music business. So it's like I already had kind of ideas of how the music business worked just from, like, reading books and stuff, like when I was in high school or whatever. Um, but being able to take those classes at the time that I was having my first recording sessions, at the time that I was first booking clients, it kind of helped catapult me a little bit quicker. Um, it's certain parts of the business that I'm still learning, but I think once money started hitting my hand, I'm like, okay, so that's like the basis of a business is supply and demand. If I have something that you want that you're willing to pay for, then, you know, I kind of kind of got to be able to keep up with it from then and you know i've always been a hustler in my own sense so i i understand like the basis of what it is to get people what they want but also i make to also make sure i get something in return for it right yeah so now um you manage right you do manage okay because i was gonna i was gonna say um you are you are very hands-on you know what i'm saying like um, you you get. I feel like producers and engineers they are hands on and they all right, but like you you're forefront hands on. Like when you that type of hands on where the artists don't even got to speak and just like moves being made, you know, uh, buttons being pushed, and on top of that, they can fall back to you for like production and engineering and you Facts. know, and probably even good conversation, good inspiration from you. Do you ever just sit back and reflect? Like I do, I do handle a lot. Like I I got, I got a lot on my plate. Like uh, for a good reason I ain't talking about like No real It might be mm -hmm. stressful But I'm talking about like For a good reason And that That give you that motivation To push forward with all that Big facts Big facts I definitely um, I, t I wear a lot of hats So I take on a lot of jobs At one time uh, A part of it is fulfilling When I see like Some of those goals That we set Start to get accomplished It, it kind of drives me To push for more um, At the same time It do get a, a little bit stressful But to whom much is given, much is tested. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And when you say you want to eat, you can't be you can't be upset when your plate is full. You just kind of got to digest it and take your time with it as you can. Uh, so it, it do be a lot of sometimes, but what I want is so much bigger. So if this is a lot, then I just got to be able to brace myself for what's on the way. You know what I'm saying? So it do kind of get to those points, but for me, it's just it's just a challenge, another thing for me to accomplish for real. For sure. That. Yeah. Have you been in a position where you had to – Navigate the politics of Chicago music. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I don't know if I uh, if I failed or if I succeeded, but um, yeah, I definitely I definitely have. It's been certain certain situations where um, I've seen stuff play out in a way that don't make the most logical sense, but I guess in the long run of things. So this is what I could say as like as I'm taking on artist management and owning my own recording studio and and like kind of trans transgression to a, a more of an executive side of things. When it comes to business, you always have to act in your own best interest for your own best interest and for the people who who kind of work with you and help you build what you do. So there have been times where I've come on to things as uh like being a team player type situation to an entity that was already set up and just kind of had to deal with a certain chain of command when I'm used to running things my own certain type of way. So, you know, not really a bad experience from it, but just like a peek behind the scenes to see how things happen on a larger scale and digesting it as a way that I need to move going forward. You know what I'm saying? Talk about like 
uh, running things under your umbrella. You know what I'm saying? You, I know you spoke a little bit early on it about like you trying to get into the marketing and everything of it, but talk about like how it's unfolding for you right now. Um, right now, um, <clears throat> it's kind of re unfolding, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. So, uh, my original location, we had to shut it down at the at like October 2022. Not exactly sure what happened, but the place where I was leasing my three units from, I had an A, B, and a C room, and I had, like, about three or four engineers who worked under me, kind of. They just, like, shut the building down. I called to pay Man. my rent one day, and he like, yeah, um, y'all got 30 days to kind of move around. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, when was y'all going to tell us this? <laughs> right. He's like, I'm telling y'all now. You're actually the first person. And by the time I pulled up to the studio, everybody in there was just like, pissed you know what i'm saying like this is not what we was expecting and it was kind of coming off like the tail end of COVID or whatever so mm-hmm. um and october of this year i just reopened uh my space in the mckinley park area so uh right now it kind of looks like rebuilding my team again i have um a couple of engineers from before who's still on board um and really just taking everything as a learning experience and knowing from the success that we had there what can we do uh, kind of a little bit more polished to help us get to help us get a little bit further. Uh, so right now it's just like getting some of the marketing materials together and letting people know that we are officially reopened, uh, getting those engineers back on board, and then in the future seeking more people to come on just to kind of make it a team thing. I'm at the point where I kind of want to be a little bit more executive than creative. For sure. So it's just like putting all those right puzzle pieces together and making sure it connect for real. Yo, do us a favor and yourself a favor by hitting that subscribe button. Make sure to tap that notification bell as well so you can stay updated. Now, let's get to the video. Before we went on break, you uh, you spoke on uh, uh, Omar Raps getting ready to drop an EP. Facts. So uh, talk about, you know what I'm saying? Because he came up here like you was just saying like, what, uh, year, almost a year ago. Yeah. You know? And he was supposed to be due for an interview today, actually. You know? Yeah. So we definitely can... Um, we definitely could talk about the new work that he putting in and how y'all how y'all chemistry is coming about on this project. Absolutely. Um the Oz EP is is the title of the EP. It's actually completely finished. Um Slow It Down that we just heard is gonna be the the, the leading single for the EP. For sure. Um Hustler's Tale was also another song on the EP and then Pain, which we dropped last year. So we kinda been building up the momentum to this point. Uh, but also still taking our time and make sure we getting our footing right uh, that we roll it out properly. So we we'll slow it down. We already got the video shot. Um, we really been putting in a lot of work, just landing different opportunities and getting different looks on him as an artist, um, and just making sure that when we do drop it, it has the anticipation that we expect for for um, where we are with things right now. So the chemistry with Omar is crazy because he started out um, working with me as like one of my clients. I'm not sure what artist connected us together, but um, it was somebody who he said uh, locked us in with a song he had recorded already. He just needed like a clean radio edit type joint. And from that, he started booking sessions. And so we was always just like on that type of basis. And he got to a point where I could see that his sound started to develop. And to me, it felt like something special, not only because did it sound good, but I kind of witnessed as he developed like from ground one up until the point that he was at then. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've always been interested in being hands on with artists. So I'm like, yo, let's present a situation where we could kind of help each other build this thing together. I can manage you, help you get opportunities. Um, just plug you with different people, like on some slight A&R type stuff and get you studio time so that we can stay consistent with everything you're doing. Right. Um, and then he kind he meets me, um, halfway with like certain certain tasks that he does as far as staying on top of his music, um, booking video shoots, staying consistent, networking. So it's like we both uh, one hand watching the other, helping each other type situation. So how is it, you know, watching an artist actually develop from, you know, something that, that may, they may have just started and then watching them grow and you actually watching it, you know what I'm saying, develop like a, like a butterfly type shit? Yeah. It's, um... Uh, it's special to me for real because like you always it's it's kind of hard to say like I'm a person who like projects so I like to see how things kind of start and where they end up in the end well Omar specifically he has like a passion for it where 
he resilient. Like, he persistent as fuck. No matter what happens, he gonna make sure that he on point for whatever he gotta do type shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and that kind of helped build the chemistry between us because it's like we just got closer together knowing that we had a lot of the same goals. And just, like, working and talking to a person every day doing this shit, of course y'all gonna get closer together type shit. Yeah. Um, so it, it was just special because I seen it from the ground up. I seen it when he was first starting. Every time he got an idea, he'd come to me, even even before I started managing him. Yo, what you think about this type of situation? So when he really started putting that stuff out and to see him execute and complete things, it's like it's a proud moment for me also. So I could only imagine what it is for him as the artist being the face of everything. For sure. Yeah. And in the little time I was uh been familiar with his music, you can you can see that like when he rapped like you know, like one thing that I feel like I got a personal feel for, I know when somebody is for real. Like, I don't care how good you try to have it, but I know when somebody is like for real. And like you can you can feel yes. it. You can feel in his delivery, just as who he is as a as a as an artist. You know what I'm saying? Because on a personal level, I haven't developed that with him, but as an artist, you feel that he for real. And and for y'all to um to share that same chemistry, even with you, like I say, with you, like I can tell by the way you talking. In a previous conversation, it means we had. I can tell you for real as well. So I'm sure y'all making. You know what I'm saying? Y'all making that that good chemistry with with y'all doings and and Big best facts. of luck to y'all. You know, cause Big facts. appreciate it. How long have, how long have y'all been connected? Cause it's, um, it's still you know on the artist engineer level since like 2017, 2016. So like six to seven years. Um, and then on a more like closer business level for a little bit over a year. Yeah. And within that year, we accomplished a lot of stuff. Um, we put out a lot of content, released a lot of music. Um, his views has gone up on his music videos. Um, his streams have gone up. His following has gone up. We landed uh, the 50th anniversary of hip hop with No Grease. It was a freestyle cypher that we mm-hmm. just did in July. It dropped on, course, of course, the 50th anniversary of hip-hop, but that's a big opportunity because a lot of dope artists been on that platform. For sure. Styles P, Sky Zoo, Lady London, and that's just a few, you know what I'm saying, to name more, and one day he'll be one of those names that people remember. Oh, uh, yeah, For that's sure. what I was going to say. It's so much time to go with the development of where y'all are taking it, you know? Yeah, and development is key. A lot of people don't develop no more, you know what I'm saying? And that kind of make it a lot, a lot more special too, for real. We in a cutting, we in a cutting corners era. Like I feel like Facts. a lot of people will see something online or see something that their peer is doing, and they try to cut that corner as quick as they can. Like they see, they see somebody going this way, they trying to, you know, you can't do that. You gotta, you gotta take all the bumps. Hey, if you ain't, if you ain't where you want to be, you gotta, you gotta conquer these levels. That's why you there. You know what I'm saying? You got from ground zero all the way to the top. You got to conquer these levels. So it's it's going to pay off, you know? That's big facts. For real. What's been your favorite part of your own personal journey? Uh, at this moment right now, just seeing how far I've taken things. Like from starting putting on $100 a month for rent at a recording studio, which I didn't even want to pay rent to engineer. I really just came in to make beats. And one of the guys I was in there with was like, man, you better start engineering. That's where you're going to get most of your clients from as far as the beats and making money and stuff. But anyway, from seeing where it came from, paying $100 a month to the point where I was able to employ people consistently, like put money in people's pockets, like get people pay stubs to where they was able to go out here and get cars and get stuff in their name, just like creating opportunities for people who come from some of those same environments as myself. Um, and being a, a small black owned business in the middle of Chicago coming from where I've come from to me like that's a major feat to accomplish um, and just knowing that if I can do that what's next to come if I could do that by myself so to speak at least I built it by myself and brought people along as the journey progressed but what can I do next you know what I'm saying and so that's probably one of the biggest things just being able to sit back and really be like we put in work for it to be to this point. Let's keep going and see what we can get it to. Facts. All right, man. That's my amazing. favorite question that, man. If you can go back and give your younger self any advice, what would it be? Choose your peers more wisely. Definitely choose your peers more wisely. I haven't done a bad job at choosing my peers. Um, but I feel like a lot of times I... I've had to learn to capitalize on having certain resources, uh, how to capitalize on having certain opportunities, and just having to capitalize on, like, the different things within my network. A lot of times you got so many people on your phone where 
some of the things that you trying to accomplish are just like one or two steps away. It's like one or two phone calls away. You'll be surprised how you can make things happen by just reaching out to people. They reach out to somebody, know they reach out to somebody they know type thing. And um, one thing about kind of being like the captain of the ship is making sure that everybody else is good but not losing so much of yourself in that that you forget you got to make sure you good to make sure everybody else good at the same time. Sure. So really just choosing my peers more wisely, for real. Big facts. All right, before we get out of here, anything else you want to tell the people? Yeah, um, everybody to follow me on social media. Uh, my Instagram is SNDBR underscore CEO. That stands for Soundboard CEO. Make sure y'all follow the studio page. That's SNDBR underscore MG. From there, y'all will see pretty much all my social media accounts, everything we got going on as far as studio time, giveaways, uh, the artists I'm tapped in with, any events that we locking in that we sponsoring, make sure y'all tap in for that. We got a studio give, giveaway coming up real soon, so y'all definitely going to want to make sure y'all follow me on social media so y'all can see the updates for that. All the artists trying to get in the recording studio, this y'all opportunity to come through, lay some hot stuff, and see what we could take from there. You never know. I might be looking for some more clients to manage. Big facts. Big facts, man. Drop the social media one more time for them. On Instagram, my personal page, that's S N D B R underscore C E O. Or you could just search Stage of Beats on Instagram. Um, and then the studio or the media group page is S N D B R underscore M G. And make sure y'all follow my artist, Omar Raps. I almost forgot to throw that in there. That's O-M-A-R dot R-A-P-P-S. Um, Oz EP on the way. So make sure y'all tap in with us for sure. All right, Jimmy, talk to the people. Yes, sir. Hey, shout out our guest, Asia Beats, for coming through. Now, first and foremost, I want to say, if you out here listening and you going through your journey of music and you want to reach that professional level, sometimes that reach of professional level don't start when you get that because you gotta work you gotta work your way up in it so please tap in you know artists please tap in because i just love when artists go about it go about their business better please tap in with stage of business i said stage of business yeah like pretty much though. yeah stage of business. <laughs> tap in with stage of business stage of beats and get in the studio you know what i'm saying and Thanks. and connect you know don't be scared to connect with nobody and meet new people and meet people that will support you along your journey but Second of all, I wanna I wanna definitely give flowers to Stage of Beats because I, I love supporting women in the game. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like I feel like you know it ain't just the you ain't got to be just on the mic. You know what I'm saying? You could be in the, in the back handling your business. And like okay. you say, you put so many people in in uh, positions where they can get check stubs. You know what I'm saying? That ain't no. I don't really and me personally. I don't really say I try not to say small business no more. Cause that's that's major. You handling major Facts. business. You know what I'm saying? That means your paperwork in order. It ain't it ain't just a it ain't just a, a equipment in here. It's business handled. You know what Facts. I'm saying? So that go a long way. So shout out to you for handling your business, and and for those people that you have yet to meet, I'm pretty sure you are gonna line them up, get them to the le next level, uh, with the business you handling with Omar. I'm pretty sure y'all gonna you know continue to thrive, handle y'all business, roll things out the right way. You know. Absolutely. Head it head to the top. So for anybody out there listening, man, get in tune. I want to see I want to see more networking with opportunities like this and more shine more light on people behind the scenes that can that can prepare you for it. You know what I'm saying? So, Absolutely, I appreciate that too. Yeah. Oh, no problem, no problem, for sure. So uh, follow Ill Sound Radio I L L S O U N D Radio. Follow Groove Nuke G R O O V N U K E. Download the Illinois app. Stream music twenty four seven and that's pretty much all I got to say. Jay, what you got to say to him? And I started this off by saying you're a GOAT. For sure. You feel me? Throughout this entire interview, you described why you was a GOAT. <laughs> After this. You caught it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you described why you was a GOAT. Facts. I don't know if you've been any longer than me, the same time as me, but I've been seeing your name for as long as I started this. You feel me? So, yeah. And that's, I want to say, like 10 plus years. You Definitely. Know? So for you to still be here, Figured this shit out, like you say, my father went to the car lot and got a car because they <laughs> employed oh under you. You know what I'm saying? Like not too many people are uh, even in position where they can help people in a in a manner like that. You know what I'm saying? So I always just like fuck it, bro. 
None of this shit matter But what you got going on Like you say You gotta put yourself In a position Where you only can think about you And then I can help Everybody else around me Cause the better position you in The better position You can put your people in Absolutely. So just keep grinding Keep growing And man Just don't 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 ever get caught up In this Chicago shit You know what I'm saying Thanks. Cause you You bigger than Chicago Like Everybody wanna make it out But imagine The next level And the level after that And you on your way there So just keep rocking Keep grinding for sure. Appreciate that. Thank y'all for, sure, for having for sure. me. Thank you for sliding through. We appreciate it.